I had the most wonderful epiphany this week, and it all builds on what I've been talking about in the last few videos. So if you haven't watched the last few videos that I've been doing for this series of just learning about the art of painting, I encourage you to watch them. Was it last week or a couple weeks ago, I was talking about Charles Reed's paintings and his five tips that he had. And one of the tips that he gave was to attach the subjects in your painting the shadow in your subjects to the cast shadow and make it all one shadow shape. And so the big insight that I had in that first video in the series, three, three videos back, was about how Charles Reed was saying, don't rely on strong contrast to make a strong painting, rely on local color. And I was like, I've never heard that. And I was trying to wrap my head around that. And it excited me because I'd never thought about local color in that way. I hadn't even thought much about local color. I think I just learned the term local color in the last month or so, but maybe I'm just rediscovering it. I don't know, but that was really cool. And then the next week I did another video about how another artist was saying, don't use local color, come up with your own colors. And he was saying that's how to make a strong painting, Alex Power. So anyway, you can watch all that in the last few videos. So I do encourage you to catch up and I am sharing my journey of watercolor learning with you guys. And it's been a popular series. So I'm going to continue on and, and, and share some of my best insights with you guys. So in today's video, we're going to talk about shadows and how magical they are. And I am going to flip through this book of masterpieces, these splash books. Let me show you one. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be prepared or anything, but this is one of the splash books. There's a new one every year and it's full of amazing work from all over the world. And the artists are allowed to share any of their work. They don't have to just share something from just the last year or two. So that means what happens in these books is the best paintings by the best watercolor artists get into these books. And I've collected most of them. And so today I'm going to flip through one of my favorite ones to illustrate this new idea about shadows that I've had, this new way of thinking about shadows in this. Uh, we're going to look at examples in this book. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so I was doing the voice voiceover for my Patreon for this new painting. And as I was doing the voiceover for where I was putting the shadow in and I painted the shadow under the wing, but I did I stop at the edge of the bird with the shadow? No, I did not. I painted it all the way into the background and let it all blend and merge together. And I had an aha moment that will really help tie your subject into the background in the shadow areas. Shadows give us that, that magic joining tool that we need as artists to attach our main subject into the painting. I am just realizing this as I'm saying it. I'm having this aha moment, y'all, just right now. The power of shadows you can use as a tool to connect disparate parts of your painting that otherwise don't connect in the real world. The bird doesn't connect to the blue sky. We just connected the blue sky to the bird by painting the blue of the sky into the shadow of the wing. Oh, MG, I just realized that. That's going to have to be a whole video. <laughs> How fun is that to have that realization? I love that. And I have to give credit to Charles Reed because I think uh, reading that one tip that he had about the importance of connecting the shadows and figures to the cast shadow helped me take that a step further in the realization of how magical shadows are. They help us as artists tie the subject of whatever we're painting into the painting to make it cohesive. So when I painted this shadow under the wing here into the background, it attached the bird into the background. It's just one more riff on the dark on dark value pairing that I talked about in the Rembrandt windmill principle. If you have not watched that video that is the most epic thing I have learned in years it I'm not exaggerating it's a must watch thing if you haven't heard about the Rembrandt windmill principle coined by the amazing artist James Gurney who also has an amazing YouTube channel 
Um, I learned about that from Tom Shepard, who also has a YouTube channel. But anyway, I also did the same concept, the same idea with the shadow of the branch and the darker underside background here. I let them merge and melt together with a wet and wet edge. And so that really helps tie a painting together and make it a cohesive uh, composition. And so I was thinking about when I had that moment, I just knew that I had to make a video about shadows. And it's not just that, about how shadows create a bridge between the subject and the background. They're like little bridges. Think of them as little bridges all over your painting to tie your painting together. You can use shadows in that way. But you can also play with the color in shadows. So yes, shadows are magical for that reason that I just now it just dawned on me how important shadows are. So I was thinking, well, what are other things about shadows that make them so special? And another thing that I love to see in paintings is when the artist takes a lot of creative license with shadows. And Charles Reed does this a lot. He'll put completely pure colors in shadows and make them part of the composition. And they actually add color and a beautiful touch of whimsy to a painting. And so I love that. So I was thinking, well, maybe I could look through a splash book with you guys and we could look at the shadows and some of the masterpieces. This is, if you don't know about the splash books, this is Splash 10. I think this is one of my favorite splash books now that I look through it. Like, look at this painting. And this is by Feeling Lin, her name is. She's Asian. And so when I saw this, I just about, I just want to fall over from just joy in my soul when I see a painting like this. So out of curiosity, I went and looked to see if there were any videos of her on YouTube. And there is. It's such a treat. So thank you so much of so much to those of you who have followed me on Patreon for free. You can follow me on Patreon for free. And I put a link in my newest Patreon post that I made a free post. So even my free members on Patreon uh, can access the link that I put on my Patreon um, so that you can watch this artist. And we are gonna see another painting by her in a minute. She's amazing. But uh, since we're on the subject of shadows, look at this shadow. Is it is it gray? Is it black? No, it's got nuances of purples and red purple and burnt sienna and these shadows glow and she used the shadows as opportunities to tie this painting together but also a place to put color. Isn't that amazing? And look, here is an, another example of what Charles Reed says to do, which is attach the shadows in the figure or whatever it is that you're painting, a tree, a person, a cat, whatever, attach it directly into the shadow, the cast shadow. Do we see much of a line between the foot and the shadow? No, we don't. She painted it as if it's one shape because when you're an artist, you start to think in terms of shapes and you think in terms of the like the pants of this man and the cane, all is one shape tied together with this shadow. Those are shadow shapes and they can act as a scaffolding to hold your painting together. I do have a whole video about shadow shapes, um, so I will link that here. But I wanna show you some more amazing shadow work in this book and I'm just gonna flip through and there's so you're going to see amazing things and you're going to want this book. So I will put a link to this book if I can find one in the description. And those will be affiliate links. I get a little bit of money when you use my links. So I do appreciate that. Um, so let's there's several paintings in here that have beautiful, colorful shadows. And your shadows don't have to be colorful for your painting to be effective. I mean, look at these shadows. They're dark and gray but the grays really uh, make the colors in the background sing here. So um, you don't have to put a bunch of color in your shadows, but it sure is fun to play. Um, here's another one by Feeling Lynn. Look at that. If I could paint like that, I would die and go to heaven right there. <laughs> Feeling Lynn, here's her name. 
Uh, if you want to read what she says here, I will uh, put this here and then you can pause the video and read this if you want. Um, okay, here is an example of the shadows where the artist played with the shadows and put colors in the shadow and they become part of the composition. They become shapes that become part of the abstract design of the painting. But look how colorful they are. I was looking for a painting. I remembered a painting that I found in one of these splash books and now I can't find it. It's this black and white zebra. The zebra is super black and white, just very uh, monochromatic. And then the shadows were painted with rainbow colors. It's such a cool painting and now I can't find it. I don't know what splash book it is. So if anyone knows out there, any splash fellow splash freaks out there, um, help me out. Look at the salt effects in that. But look, those shadows are, I actually don't really like these shadows. They're really dark and heavy, but I love the texture they got with the salt. Um, here's some really delicate shadows. Isn't it fun to flip through these books? They're just full of amazing inspiration that just sometimes some of these paintings literally give me chills. They make me want to cry with um, delight. <laughs> um, there are several more paintings in here. Okay, here's one that has a lot of color in the shadows. See how that becomes part of the design? Let's see if there's, I think there's a couple more. This one has red shadows. Very colorful. Really interesting use of shadows there. Oh, here's one. Look how amazing these shadows are. It's almost, it's more about the shadows in this painting than anything almost. Just, they just pulsate with color. It's like the color is alive. It's just gorgeous. Some purple shadows in this one. Here's quite the amazing shadow in this painting. It leads the eye in with that purple to um, blue to green. Just absolutely gorgeous. That's by William McAllister. Oh, look at this one. This is by Rusty Jewel. Look at, the, I mean, most of the painting is monochromatic, very yellow, very warm. And then the cool shadows. This artist was having a fun time experimenting with the question, what if I make a yellow painting, a very warm painting, and then just make just the shadows. See this shadow here is purple. Um, that, that's fun. Here's what Rusty Jewel had to say about his painting, if you're interested. I think that's about it. Let's just. This one has quite a bit of color in the shadows. I mean, look how how much, um, how many different colors are in these shadows. Just really pretty. That's by Alvin Joe. Look 
Oh, wow. Look at the colors. And I mean, you can't get brighter colors than that. This is by Cheryl Winfurtner. So shadows not only give things form and shape and depth and dimension and a 3D quality, they are good for that, for telling the story of something as it moves through space, but they can also be thought of as a design element on a flat 2D plane in a painting where they become part of the abstract design. The shapes and the colors are just as important in the shadows in these paintings as the quote unquote main subject, which here is the flowers. But it's almost like this shadow is at, at least as important as the flowers for the composition. These shadows are really interesting. They're quite gray, but they're just still, they're just gorgeous. They tell the story of the light. So that's another thing shadows do. They tell this story of the form of the 3D nature of whatever it is the painting's about, but they can also tell the story of light. When there's soft shadows, the light is soft and ethereal maybe. And then in shadows like this, the shadows are telling the story of a bright, crisp, beautiful day. So it kind of, you can use shadows to set the mood in your paintings too. If they're hard edged and crisp like this, you're telling the story of probably a sunny um, day, a happy, joyful feeling. And then on a snowy day like this, maybe you're telling the story of the sun setting and it being kind of a quiet, um, peaceful part of the day. So the shadows can also help tell the story of the feeling of the time of day and, and the mood and the atmosphere are affected by how you paint your shadows. Are they soft? Are they hard edged? Are they colorful? Are they gray? So shadows do a lot of work in a painting, don't they? And um, when I had that epiphany and then I started thinking, um, well, what could I make this video about? It made me realize, wow, shadows do a lot. And I've never really thought about shadows like that. I've never thought about them that much. So I really was excited to bring this idea to my YouTube channel. And I'm also really excited about some new things happening with me. I've got a video coming up that's about an amazing app that I recently discovered, and I can't wait to share that with you. And so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And be sure to subscribe to learn not just the how, but the why of watercolor so you move along your painting journey a lot faster. Join my Patreon for free where I post quite frequently updates about what I'm doing. You can also follow me for free, of course, on my community tab. I post there a lot. I post mostly on Patreon though, but you can also follow me and uh, interact with me and my community on my free Facebook group, Rachel's Watercolor Workshop. And you can post your paintings and, and we can all get to know each other better. And I love that because in the community, that is where I learn so much and that's where you can learn so much. You can post your paintings and get feedback and help and guidance. And I like to do that as well. It helps me um, develop my paintings. So I would love for you to join my free Facebook group. And of course, if you are interested in painting soft, dreamy animals, and I'm always pursuing a looser style, not always getting there, but I'm learning too. I'm doing a lot of portrait work. In fact, I'll show you. This is a study that I've, I've done, and it's a challenging painting. So this is the kind of thing that I do with my professional tier Patreon students, more portraits, more professional. Like I just did a video on my video setup and I shared that with my students. So like this, this is what I use to film with. So um, I do professional level paintings and projects on my $30 tier, but I do have a great $8 tier. This is on my $8 tier. And um, but the very best tutorials, especially if you're a beginner, I think are in my $13 tier. Um, that is for those of you who really want to access the best of my be of the best of my library. And for those of you who don't know how Patreon works, it's kind of like a magazine subscription, but it's a subscription to a library of over 100 tutorials. And the higher the tier you pay, 
the more you get access to. So my $30 Patreon level tier gets access to everything. My $13 tier gets access to almost everything and all my very best beginner and highly edited course, you know, my 